Confession time, I'm a Real Housewives of Orange County diehard. There's just something about the OG franchise that I just can't shake. Across the show's run, the women have been cutthroat and the ladies are able to mix high and low stakes drama to produce fantastic storylines. The social dynamics change from season to season and we can have enemies become friends only to hate each other again in like a year's time. Historically, they haven't had to rely on the glitz and the glam or stunt casting to keep us interested. But even with such an incredible history, it's become practically a fact that the show has lost a lot of its luster, and fans have been turning away in droves, as Kelly Dodd relentlessly points out on Twitter. With that being said, I don't think the show is dead in the water, and with season 16, which is just wrapping up as I write this, we're seeing the show's quality shift in an upwards direction. Still, I know a lot of fans are not satisfied with where the show's at, so I wanted to really dissect the modern era of Orange County and see if we can work through how to get the show back on track. Like I said with my similar Real Housewives of New York video, many minds are better than one, so if you have any other ideas I don't touch upon, leave a comment with your thoughts. But let's begin with where we're at as season 16 wraps up and analyze the cast a little bit. Let's begin with our biggest change this year, which was, of course, the return of Heather Page Kent Dubrow. Now, I love me some fancy pants. I think she elevated the show when she first joined in season 7, and she did it again with her comeback this year. We saw the ladies on private jets and with at-home chefs in their sprawling, luxurious vacation properties, and Heather made it possible. We got to see her lavish, over-the-top life, and I loved every bit of it. I had designed those sconces for the house. It's like our house sconce. I do think Heather's return was an overwhelmingly positive thing, but it made me realize that I like her better on the sidelines than front row. We had Heather for the first time as a center orange girl, and I don't know if that's the right place for her. To me, the center symbol lady on any franchise needs to do the heaviest lifting in terms of conflict and storyline, and I don't know that I like Heather here after witnessing it. This season, we saw quite a nasty side of Dubrow, and it made me realize that with her, the lower stakes the conflict, the better. I love watching her get in a tizzy over stealing seats. I'm taking my chair back, is that okay? What do you mean? Uh, Because I sat down here and then she told me to move and I don't want to move, I want to sit here. In roles on sitcoms, in bows on cakes at parties she's thrown for herself for changing her own name. I'm sorry, but that girl Sarah broke the bow off my cake and ate it. Are you kidding me? What I don't love is seeing her threaten poor Shannon Storm's fedora with legal action or be accused of shoving crew members against walls. It's too much and it makes me a little bit scared of her. I also think it's a little dangerous to give Heather too much control with production because she seems to me to be more likely to script scenes than some of the other ladies. But I do really like watching her with her family and you can't deny the effect she has on the other women, which we'll get to in time, so I think without a doubt we need to keep Heather on OC. She's a force for great on the show, but I'd like to see her go back to a more supporting role like we had in her first stint on the show, or give her an adversary that can keep up with the heavy blows she can deliver. The other big changes were the newbies, Noella and Dr. Jen. Let's start with Noella, who I think was one of the best new additions we've had on the show in a very, very long time. Now, some of you may be rolling your eyes at me saying that, and I get it. Noella is a lot. She ran through the season like a Tasmanian devil, leaving a trail of chaos everywhere she went. She gave us the biggest personal storyline with her spontaneous divorce, as well as the most drama with the women, fighting with nearly everyone besides Shannon at some point. I think this led to a bit of Noella overkill as she was coming at us from all fronts, but it seems as if the stuff in her personal life with Sweet James has gotten to a point of closure, so I think it will be interesting to see what she gives us with a second season. There's a very real chance she may think she needs to outdo herself and goes even bigger, which may lead to some Bronwyn-esque exhaustion, but she also may settle in a bit, get a bit more comfortable and socially integrated into the group, and be in this thing for the long haul, which of course is what I'm hoping for, as there's a lot to love about Noella. She's got a bit of a camp factor to her. She's prone to theatrics, which makes scenes that would feel heavy from other housewives have a bit of a wink to them. She also turns out looks like we've never seen before on OC. I'm so wild about so many of the things she wore this season, and I'd love to see what she comes up with next year. Plus, she's someone who loves to stand out, even if it means going up against Heather Dubrow, who gathered up allies like we've never seen before. We need someone with a backbone who's not afraid to stand up for herself on OC, and Noella gives us that. With her, we'll always have opposing forces. She knows how to push the right buttons to create controversy, and that is so, so needed on a show that's all about conflict. I also find her to be a bit strategic. I was not feeling her in episode 1, but when she took Shannon's side in the Nobu party disaster, I knew we were working with someone who thinks long term and chooses her allies wisely. I think one aspect of Noella that could be a little bit off-putting is that she's a student of the Housewives game. She's been overtly trying to get on the show for years and comes across a bit thirsty for the gig. But I think that aspect works because it gets called out on the show. You are a liar and a thirsty girl. And I'm done. Bye. Kind of shocked that you understand what thirsty means. We don't.
don't need to hold her accountable for that because her cast members do, so I don't feel the need to be annoyed by it. I also want to see how Noella is when she doesn't have to be on the defensive so much because I think she really has a heart. When Bronwyn was on Tamara's podcast, she talked at length about how sweet Noella was when caring for Bronwyn when she was going through a bunch of things, and I'd love to see her in a place where she's helping someone else on this show. And plus, we're going to get antics from her. She's going to do absurd things just because she knows it's entertaining for us, and I love that about her. She's truly different from anyone we've ever seen on the show, and I think it's absolutely mandatory that she stays on for another season. I hope I don't regret saying that because I know there's a high chance I might at some point, but as of now, I'm fully on the Noella coaster. But let's move on to the quieter, the much, much quieter newbie from season 16, which is, of course, Dr. Jen. I fear I may be one of the few Dr. Jen apologists out there, but I actually really enjoyed her this season. She didn't create nearly as big of a splash as Noella did, but I'm not going to hold that against her. We saw echoes of Vicky with her commitment to her work and the weird family dynamic she has going on, which I found super intriguing. Full disclosure, I'm a Ryan diehard. I think he's so quirky and I love the gender role reversal that we've got going on. Seeing the push and pull of their relationship made me want to know more. I get that most people aren't into Jen as she didn't give us that much, but I think she gave us just enough for me to want more. I want to know what's going to happen with her and Ryan. Will they stay together? It's unclear. There also seems to be some legal issues that have come up surrounding her medical practice, so we could have another true crime type of season if she stays on, or at least a bigger storyline. I could see Emily digging into all of this and bringing it up on the show. I'm also super into how quintessentially OC Jen is. Not only does she get fillers, she gives them. And the ones I give are the best. She also very much has that OC look with the Peggy Thanos-esque big boobs and blonde hair. I love the beachy vibe she gives us. Plus, I was absolutely loving seeing her turn into Heather's mini-me towards the end of the season. It kind of reminded me of that show Screen Queens with all of the Chanel's in their diamond formation. I have this vision of a million Dubrow minions running around the OC, terrorizing Shannon Bedore, and I need to see it come to fruition. So, I wouldn't be devastated if Dr. Jen didn't return, but I hope she does. And under Heather's guidance, I think we could see her shape into a fantastic housewife if we just give her a little bit of time. But speaking of minions, let's talk about Gina. Now, when I initially started prepping my thoughts for this video about halfway through this season, I was wanting to straight up demote Gina to a friend of position. I think she can be fun with the ladies and can stir the pot enough to stay on the show, but I've never cared for her home life scenes, even when she had some pretty major stuff going on. I think that's the most important distinction between a full-time housewife and a friend of, do we want to see their home life? The answer with Gina is still no, although it seems like there's some messiness happening off camera with her boyfriend and his ex, so things could potentially get more interesting if she stays on full-time. Gina's public perception has been an absolute roller coaster. We had two seasons of absolute perplexity on how she was even cast on the show in the first place. It honestly made no sense. She wasn't age appropriate to be hanging out with the women, wasn't organically friends with any of them until her and Emily became close. She wasn't extraordinarily wealthy or stylish. Plus, she hid her crumbling marriage from us at first, so we had this strange situation that wasn't being explained. Because she was keeping things hidden, it was hard to build up any connection to her. I guess she was meant to be more of the every woman housewife, but we as fans have never demanded that. It was just bizarre. It wasn't until season 15, on a cast so destitute for likability and a season essentially halted by COVID, that fans started to warm to her. She was the only rootable person, and I think a lot of fans, including myself, really warmed up to her as she showed kindness towards Bronwyn and kept things light and fun. That's why it was such whiplash when she spent season 16 trailing Heather Dubrow like a shadow, having disproportionately aggressive reactions to Shannon and Noella, and ultimately morphing into this super villain-esque figure by the final few episodes. It got so absurd that I started to come back around towards enjoying her, as she became such a monster that it evolved into a sort of love-to-hate-her type of situation. I did find her to be really aggravating, as I couldn't see where she was coming from half the time, but at least she was making me feel something, and I think on these shows, as much as we need someone to root for, we also need someone to root against, and Gina became that for me. I did find it kind of incredible that she really went for the possessed by a demon story. Like, wow, Gina. That's just, wow. So, I could go either way on Gina returning. I see the value in her coming back, especially if she goes down the path towards becoming a full-on villain, but if she were to leave, I wouldn't be signing any petitions for her to return. But it seems like a good time to talk about her partner in crime, Emily Simpson. Now, I think Emily had a fantastic season and is really becoming a great housewife. I actually really enjoy her home life dynamics, which is not typically a draw for me. I really love seeing just how far her relationship has come with her husband Shane, as just a few seasons ago, they were in a terrible place and he was one of the most despised house husbands around. To see them come back together has really given me a lot of hope and an example of why fighting for a relationship can be worth it, a lesson not typically displayed on The Real Housewives. 
I also think the Mormon aspect of their relationship is really interesting, and I want to see a bit more on how they handle religion with their kids. She also really picked up some steam with the ladies and has come into this bone carrier type of role. She's gotten really blunt and messy and overtly stirs the pot to the point where it's gotten talked about amongst the other ladies. She also has an investigative side, which I would like to bring out more. What I really want from her is to switch allegiances and join forces with Shannon, as I like the glimmers we got of them together, and I think Gina kind of brings her down, but of course, it's her life and she will be friends with who she chooses. And last, our current longest-running cast member, Miss Shannon Storms Bedore, who also had a fantastic season and seems to be the overwhelming fan favorite as the season reaches an end. We as an audience have seen Shannon go through so much, and it's so satisfying to see her in a place where she's really beginning to thrive. I love her relationship with John, and it was nice getting to learn a bit more about him this season. We also got to dive a bit more into her origins and saw more of her parents. She also had a bit of a gang-up season with Noella as her only real ally, but as with most gang-ups, it only served to endear the audience towards Shannon, which was needed after a fairly terrible season the year prior. Of course I want Shannon to stay. She's the heart of the show, and her neuroses allow her to always bring conflict. I would like to see her turn into more of a Sonia-esque figure, less often being the target of gang-ups and more being the comic relief and party girl. But as I said with Heather, I don't think Shannon has the chops to be the center orange girl. We tried that with season 15 and it really didn't go well. Shannon is too delicate to take those big hits needed with the center orange, which is why I propose we bring someone back who has a proven track record of carrying the show. Tamra, obviously. Yeah, I think we need Tamra back. The show has felt a bit off since she and Vicky exited. When they played the iconic OC finale music in season 16, the vibe was just uncanny. It felt so off without the hottest housewife in the OC and the OG. I'll talk a little more about Vicky in a bit, but I think Tamara is truly the glue that made the show great in the first place. She approaches the gig like the job it is and keeps stories moving. She's not afraid to stir the pot and is a master at getting out of social binds when people catch on to her ways. She can be a bit nasty and really cuts to the core, but that's the OC way, and none of us watch this show for morality lessons. I also think that adding in Tamara will massively change the dynamics. The big draw, of course, would be her relationship with Shannon. After years of being friends, soulmates, and sisters, the two had a public falling out when Tamara was fired from the show. Tamara was going through a lot, both with losing her job of 12 years and with her ex-husband Simon being very sick. She says that when she reached out to Shannon for support, her calls went unanswered, which really hurt her as she felt that she'd been there for Shannon during her hard times. Tamara being Tamara got a bit nasty with the feud, and now the two haven't spoken in a few years. I think the initial confrontation between the two of them would give us an explosive beginning to the season, but I really feel that they'd ultimately make up. One of Tamara's best qualities as a housewife is her ability to move on from conflict. She forgave Vicky for faking cancer and calling her husband gay, so she'd surely be able to move past it on her end. She also seems to be warming to Shannon a bit on her podcast. I think Shannon is so ally poor at the moment that she'd really have no choice but to forgive Tamara and get back together. She was able to move on after the season 9 fiasco where she found out Tamara was making fun of her neuroses. I just need you to explain to me why you are saying that I have green Martians living in my head and that I make stuff up. Oh I my don't. God. Even though this was a deeper wound, we saw Shannon too has an ability to move past conflict as she forgave Vicky for saying her ex physically abused her. I do think that the trust is largely broken between the two, so it will be an unstable friendship that could implode at any moment, but I think that tension will keep the show interesting. What I'm personally most interested to see with a hypothetical Tamara return is the dynamic between her and Heather Dubrow. They're both alpha types that strive for the center orange position, but on season 7 through 11, Dubrow was forced to kiss the ring and step back, leaving Tamara up front. They also were always aligned, only with minor spats between the two. Even during the Tamara takedown in Bali in season 9, Heather never truly left Tamara's side. But now that Heather's gotten a taste for the HBIC status, will she give it up to Tamara? I really don't think she will, especially now that she's been empowered by her minions of Gina and Dr. Jen. I also don't think Tamara and Heather are all that close at this point. I think they've remained surface level since Heather's exit, but I don't think they're necessarily at a place where they're solidly aligned. My prediction would be that the two of them would start the season as friends with a little underlying tension, then something will happen and a new war will begin. I think that the two of them at odds would be fantastic, as I think they could be a fairly even match. I think that even if Heather gets nasty, Tamara can take it and vice versa. I actually think Tamara would be the one at a disadvantage because of Heather's allies, but I think that would make the show more interesting. Tamara almost reminds me of the Big Brother player and how she approaches housewives, and the best Big Brother players are the most interesting when they're facing adversity, so I'd love to see Tamara have to claw her way to the top. I also think the dynamic between Tamara and Emily would be interesting. 
Tamara historically hasn't respected Emily and often talks about her bewilderment as to how Emily has stayed on the show for this long, but seems to have been turning around a bit, not liking Emily, but seeing her value. It would be interesting to see where their relationship would go. I think they could be a fun team as they're both strategic and stir the pot, but I think it's more likely that we'd see them at odds as they have been for the majority of their time together on screen. I think they could be pretty well-matched rivals if we were able to give Emily some support. I think bringing in Lizzie Robzik as a friend could potentially work as her and Emily are friends off the show and both hate Tamara. I talked about Lizzie in depth in my One Hit Wonders video, but Lizzie's been the only housewife to successfully take down Tamara. Emily with some support tried it in season 14, but Tamara was able to wiggle out of that. I don't think it necessarily needs to happen next season, but if Tamara comes back and gets too powerful, it could be fun to throw Lizzie into the mix, and along with Emily, they could really keep Tamara on her toes. We could even add in Gretchen Rossi into the mix and really get Tamara working. I'd love to see how Tamara handles Noella as well. I can see her really aggravated with her, but I think they could also settle in as friends. Noella has a bit of a Brandy Glanville-esque quality to her, and I could see their relationship going on a similar trajectory where they don't like each other at first, but then realize they have a lot of fun together. I think Tamara at least sees the value in her as a housewife and would respect her more than someone like Gina or Dr. Jen. I think Tamara could really change up the social dynamics of the show, but even without her, I think the show can still go on. I think we'll always have some simmering tension between Heather and Shannon. This is all speculation, but I think Heather feels a weird sense of competition with Shannon. It almost seems like Shannon triggers something from Heather's childhood. Shannon grew up as an incredibly wealthy California girl, and I get the vibe that Heather feels a little bit of jealousy about that. I do think that Heather grew up well off, but perhaps not at the level that Shannon did, and I think that Heather in some ways equates wealth and value. Of course, now Heather is the wealthiest housewife in OC, and even though Shannon is by no means poor, she's not living nearly as lavishly as she once did. I just get the vibe that Heather sees Shannon as the one cast member that's not totally quote-unquote beneath her, and it bothers her. I think that there will always be a bit of a Cold War dynamic between the two of them, and I don't think they'll ever truly be intimate friends, which I think will keep the franchise alive as tension ebbs and flows between the two of them. I also wonder if Gina and Emily will stay together as Gina gets closer to Heather. I know they've always been close on the show, but I think if they were to have a falling out, it could really open up the show so it feels like less of a gang up on Shannon and Noella. Gina also seems to take Emily for granted a bit, as we've seen more than once her leave Emily in the dust for the popular girls. I think if Emily had another option to go to, it may be enough to cause a true severance in their relationship. So let's close out with some extra casting options, starting with who I'd like to bring back. There's nobody that I necessarily want as full-timers besides Tamara, so I'm thinking more friends or guests for some of our ex-housewives. Let's start with the OG of the OC. I'm totally on board to bring back Vicki Gumbelson. I think she's one of the most effortlessly entertaining housewives, and it would be interesting to see how she handles a return to her show. I think she's always thought of herself as the main character, so I would love to see how the other ladies would treat her and vice versa now that she's been knocked down a peg. I don't know if we'd need her full time right away, but they could test the waters as a guest or a friend and see how she does. I'd also love an Alexis Bellina return, especially now that she's gotten away from Jim and remarried. I'd love to see where she's at now. She's also a naturally entertaining person, and her era of OC is my favorite. She keeps things light and silly while still triggering drama from the other ladies. I don't know if she'd do it or if they'd want her back, but I certainly want to see more of Jesus Jugs. As I mentioned, I think Lizzie and Gretchen could really stir up drama, but I'd only want them back if we got Tamara too. I think they play off of Tamara really well, but I'm not really interested in seeing them on their own. I also think Bronwyn would be interesting to bring back, given her relationship with the current cast. She was friends with both Jen and Noella before they joined the show, though her and Noella have had some sort of falling out. I think Bronwyn wore us all out, and it doesn't seem like the show is that good for her, but a guest appearance here and there could be fun. The last person who's probably worth bringing up is Kelly Dodd, but I don't think there's really any chance that she comes back as she's just too controversial and has really doubled down since leaving the show. I was never a big fan of hers even in her early seasons, but she'll be featured more in depth in a future video I have planned, so let's just leave her in the never gonna return bin for now. I also think we should leave the door open for some newbies. I've seen some people talking about Kenny, Noella's friend joining, but I don't really have much of an opinion. I didn't get enough of an impression from her, but I think having a Noella ally would be a good thing. She's also really beautiful and seems wealthy and fabulous, so I guess she's an option. I do think OC is probably one of the easier cities to cast, as I think there are a lot of women who are jonesing to join the show. I think they should look for someone who's funny, whether it's intentional or not, as I think that's what the show really needs. So those are my thoughts on where we're at with OC, how it could be improved, and where I potentially see it going. If you have any other ideas or thoughts on modern day OC, please leave them in the comments because I really want to hear what you think. 
And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And thank you so much to everyone who subbed and watched my videos. It's cool to know that I'm no longer speaking into a void. I'm trying to quicken my upload pace, so stay tuned for future videos. I'll also leave my socials in the description if you want to connect on Twitter or Instagram. But I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye! Jen doesn't have a lot of original thoughts. She follows Heather around, and if Heather says, oh, it looks amazing, and Jen will go, amazing. I don't want to get involved. I don't want to be involved. Yeah. And your kids had their first day of school. They had their first day of Which school. Which was very exciting. No! No. No. And then Heather will say something else like, oh, this looks so good, and she'll go, so good. The story keeps changing. It keeps changing. She just repeats everything Heather says. Is it like a marked trail? It's a marked trail. Oh, what? Yeah.